Lecture 1B, Constitution and Governance. Today we talk about Independence Constitution, Lancaster House Conferences, Kanu versus Kadu Wars, and how the reception of the Independence Constitution was in Kenya. <laughs> Today we talk about Kenya's 1963 Constitution, also called the Independence Constitution. It was called the Independence Constitution and was based on the standard Lancaster House template. Uh, British, or oh, the time British was called Great Britain, it had very many colonies. So when the colonies were actually getting their independence, they used kind of one template. You know, you go to Ghana, use the same template. You go to Kenya, use the same template. That's why we call it the Lancaster House template. And that's what was also used in Kenya. The template was used for the former British colonies in Africa. That's the Lancaster House for you in London, still standing. Very famous because that's where many constitution for African countries that were under the Euro, the British yoke were actually made. So quite an iconic house uh, in London. If you get there, try to get to the Lancaster House and see how it looks like. So the Lancaster House Constitution Template, the Lancaster House Constitution Template, standard used. I think I've told you that already. And there is the Lancaster House again from the front. You can see really imposing building. That is where people's lives were being determined you know constitution as we say it is the one that determines the lives of the people how it will be run how they will live what lifestyles they are so constitution very important because it determines the governance of that country so what was in the lancaster house template under the 1963 constitution of kenya the british monarch queen elizabeth ii who died the other day she lived up to 96. Can you imagine 96? Anyway, was represented by the head of state uh, by, in Kenya by a governor general. The first one, or the last one, I think, was Malcolm Donald. But do your research. So when Kenya was getting the independence, still it was the head of state was the queen. Even today, Britain, the head of state is the queen. And the prime minister works under the head of state. But more ceremonial but every prime minister must actually report to the queen and the queen must be informed uh, of what is really happening uh, i think they have weekly meetings or something like that that's why now uh, charles the third is going to be the monarch and is going everybody or every prime minister will have to report to king charles the third so that's the, how the constitution was the british monarch queen elizabeth ii was represented as head of state by the governor general in kenya there is your governor general inspecting the guard of honor yeah sir evelyn bearing that was 1954 that's what was there what was in the lancaster house template the constitution also provided for bicameral parliament the national assembly consisting of the senate and the house of representatives by for two all right by means two then there is unicameral but the constitution provided for bicameral. So in 1963, we had a Senate and we also had a House of Representatives. But we'll see, in 1966, it was abolished. So the Senate and the National Assembly that we are seeing now is not a new thing totally. That's what we started with in 1963. Then it was abolished. Each province had an elected assembly. So we had eight provinces, if I remember properly. There was a central, there was a eastern there was coast there was northeastern there was nyanza there was western and there was nairobi if i've left maybe one in 1964 the constitution was amended to make the country a republic with the president as both head of state and head of government so in 1964 what meant is we broke away totally from the british monarch we became a republic and we we'll look at what is a republic but then that's when mze jomo kenyatta was installed as the president and he was both head of state and head of government. In the other case, the head of state was the queen and the head of government was the prime minister. So in 1963, when we got the constitution, Kenyatta was head of government, but the head of state was still the queen, so to speak. And that's why we broke out and we became a republic in 1964 so that we can govern our own affairs. That's Mze Jomo Kenyatta, first president of the Republic of Kenya, and he became the head of state and head of government in 1964 after Kenya became a republic. And I guess you know who he is. He's the father of the former president, President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. If you would like, 
uhunye for that matter unicameral we talk about bicameral bicameral means there's the senate there is the house of representative or bi means two so that means there is uh, the house of representative which has to deliberate and the senate has to kind of vet the senate has kind to is a kind of an overseer of what the uh, parliament or the house of representatives is doing but in 1963 the membership of the senate and the house of representative was combined to form a unicameral national assembly so it was combined as i say the senate was abolished and we had one unicameral national assembly and as you'll see that time it was a really hot politics because it was kind of bringing in a dictatorship and it was consolidating power kanu had uh, uh, absorbed kadu and it became a one a party state so to speak um but not it wasn't a law by then, but it was really a one-party state. It was only Kanu and Kanu. So bicameral uh, divides, but unicameral does not divide its members into separate assemblies, chambers, or houses. So you have a unicameral legislator. And now, at the moment, we have a bi. But from 1966 to 2010, uh, no, 2013 to be exact, when we had the election with, under the new constitution, we really had a unicameral. Uh, so here are the definitions: unicameral versus bicameral. You can read them. I've explained about them, but this explains more about what is the difference. And they have their strengths and weaknesses, so to speak. Mm, whenever you have something, you don't think that it's better. There's nothing perfect. You always have the pros and the cons. So if you look at it, it, let, it explains to you: uh, bicameral legislature. Uh, or bicameralism is a system where there are two separate assemblies or houses or chambers. Unicameral, practice of having only one parliamentary or legislative chamber. This is practiced even in the United States. They have the House of Representatives. They also have the, sen uh, the Senate. That's the, how the Congress. I thought I should compare it so that, you know, Kenya is not dealing in a vacuum. We actually compare with the world. Bicameralism is a type of legislature one divided into two separate assembly chambers or houses known as a bicameral legislature so it depends you can call one a national assembly you can call it a house of representatives some might call it the, maybe duma it depends on where you are but but what it means is one divided into two separate assemblies Legislative branch, the Parliament of Kenya is the country's bicameral legislator, and we are talking about now, just to compare with what we had during the uh, uh, 1963 election. Now we have a Senate, 67, 67 seats, 47 members directly elected by the counties, 16 women nominated by political parties, two members to represent the youth, and two members to represent the persons with disability. That gives you 67. National Assembly, 349 seats, 290 elected from the constituency, 47 elected from counties, that's the women reps, and 12 nominated representatives. Members, you know, they serve for five years, as it is right now. I've already explained this. I think bicameral is distinguished from unicameral, in which all members deliberate and vote as a single group. Okay, so now to get the real difference, I've talked about both of them, but now you can actually see and compare and contrast. Remember, uh, these are the difference, but the differences are that one has many houses, other one is single. As of 2015, about 40% of world's national legislatures are bicameral, and about 60 are unicameral. So you see, unicameral is still quite uh, popular, uh, despite that some think it is too stifling, maybe there's so much uh, dictatorship, it's just one chamber, but... Uh, uh, this is still really popular, 60%. Of often the members of the two chambers are elected or selected by different uh, methods, which vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. And this can often lead to the two members having different composition of members. And uh, in Kenya, you know, we vote at once for the six. And I guess you know the six. I'll give you the three. President, Governor, Women Rep. Can you give me the fourth, the fifth, the sixth? Very good, very good. So, how was the constitution 
uh, of uh, 1963 uh, obtained. How did we get it? They were what they were called Lancaster House Conferences. I showed you the Lancaster House. I told you that's where uh, most constitutions were done and they had the Lancaster House template. In Kenya, we had three conferences. And if you can see the picture there, we have uh, uh, Kenyatta, we have Tomboya, we have some of the independence leader, some of the Mwangei went, we had uh, Shikuku, and um, we had Mbiu, uh, just to mention a few. So the first one was 1960, the second one 1962, the third one 1963, which got us the independence. Independence was, uh, a constitution was uh, promulgated in December. 12, 1963. That's when we got independence. So the Lakasa uh, House Conferences were three meetings, 1960, 1962, 1963, in which Kenyans, Kenya's constitutional framework and independence were negotiated. That's where they were negotiated. So they used to fly there, they'll stay there, I don't know how long, maybe a month or two, while they discuss and see how they could uh, actually uh, get a constitution and remember a constitution has to serve all parties the issue about Kenya there were very many different parties there's the white settlers there is uh, the Arabs who are there the Sultan who was running the coastal mile strip there were the Somalis in the north there is the uh, big tribes there's the small tribes and uh, all that needed to be catered for as you know the constitution needs to cater for all even now we have a constitution that we say is good it serves a number of uh, parties, but still, the disabled might feel they're not really well catered for. They're the youth, and uh, even children might feel that they're not well catered for. So the Lancaster House Conferences, the first conference was under the chairmanship of Secretary of State for Colonies, and that was Ian McLeod in January 1960. There were no agreements, and McLeod issued an interim constitution, which means we were still under the British colony. We had not yet got independence, but that's when it started. And uh, who are the two in the picture, if you can uh, get close and see? Anyway, this Tomboya and Kenyatta. Guess who's who? Uh, as you uh, look at the uh, video lesson and uh, let me know what you think. They were the architects. They were great friends. And uh, later, it looks like there was some enmity because uh, Mboya was assassinated in 1969. And... Uh, there was some aspect that it was actually uh, driven or state driven and uh, those are allegations i'm not saying they're the truth but that's what politics sometimes can bring the second conference commend, uh, commenced in february 1962 and a framework for self-governance was negotiated and here you have a picture of those who are there some of those and uh, we see 1962 masinde muliro became pretty famous that's why you have Masinde Muliro University okay so you get to know where these things come from there was Ole Tipis he represented the Maasai he was a minister in Kenyatta's government for a long while Daniel Moy who became the vice president and later the president Wafula Wabuge not very much known but he was I guess a senator and he was part of the Lancaster House conferences in 1962 as you can see, the 1963 conference finalized constitutional arrangements for Kenya's independence as a dominion, and that marked the end of more than 70 years of colonial rule. And as you can see, that was a milestone, and here Kenyatta is giving an address, I think, to uh, I'll, uh, kind of uh, celebrate, kind of uh, keynote speech to say, hey, thanks for giving us the constitution. Now we're going to actually um, rule ourselves. It's been quite a journey. And I'm just guessing. I'm just <laughs> putting words into his mouth. But that Kenyatta was to be the prime minister to be uh, for the first uh, government. In all three meetings, Prime Minister Harold Macmillan ordered that the interests of the white settlers in Kenya effectively be ignored. Uh, uh, Prime Minister at that time was this guy you see on, the, on your right of the screen, and uh, that the British government continue negotiation until real and complete independence for Kenya could be established. So there was a big issue. Should the settlers be actually chased out of Kenya? Should they be settled? What? do we do with those in zimbabwe 
remember or you might not know but i'll tell you robert uh, mugabe actually chased them and that was a crisis because they owned the big lands they knew how to produce the crops they had the machinery and you cannot just evacuate thousands of people who are businessmen then the, the economy collapsed so it's tricky when you are actually uh, balancing politics economy and all those it's important to know how to go about it so that's why prime minister harold macmillan ordered that the interests of the white settlers in kenya effectively uh, in kenya effectively be ignored but that was not what really happened because it's very tricky this led to some anger from within the elements of the british conservative party who wanted britain to find an agreement that would postpone independence as i said you cannot ignore that was the interest of those who have been there. And conservatives tend to remain, the, even the white conservatives, status quo, no change. Let's just be the way things are. They got angry that Macmillan wanted just the Kenyans or the Africans or, or to have their affairs and uh, let the white settlers be ignored. But that was dangerous, and I'll tell you it is, because Zimbabwe, the fruits of that has been seen. Zimbabwe right now is still struggling with the economy. There you are, Prime Minister Harold Macmillan. First Senate, 1963-1966, as I said, uh, talking more about it now. Kenya's 1963 constitution was established, a Senate that consisted of 41 senators elected for six years with one term of the members one third of the members retiring every two years all right so you come in uh, 41 senators elected for six years with one third of the members retiring every two years and uh, in taita here we had our first senator was voresha mengo you want to check that i want to ask you to go check who was your first senator in the 1963 constitution wherever you come from we know uh senator wamalwa uh, the current uh, minister, or uh, the former CS, CS, the father was a senator. I uh, don't know about Wangala, but th there are famous families who they were, uh, their parents were senators uh, in the 1960s. <laughs> then you had first parliament of independent Kenya, first senator, first senate, Timothy Chokwe from the coast. There you see him. He served as the first speaker of the senate. Quite an honor for the coast. Uh, Timothy Chokwe to be a Senate uh, speaker and in the parliament there was still a British settler or you can say it was a British Sir Humphrey Sled who actually was a speaker for quite a while almost until uh, President Moy took over because I can remember I used to hear about Humphrey Sled and uh, he he must have been a great speaker because uh, if he was uh, kept on for all that time, must have been a great speaker. The work of a speaker is an ex-official, and it's, it's quite something to balance. The Senate was abolished in 1966, as I told you, when its membership was combined with that of the House of Representatives to form a unicameral legislature. So I'm just reiterating what we said, and uh, that's where the beginning of uh, problems started, because it became more dictatorial it became there were no rights there was only one party kanu and we'll see there were many amendments because people were or the, the political class was feeling the constitution is uh, not working for them but they also the uh, elite wanted to make sure that they really tighten the news so that it becomes even more imperial the house of representatives also represented was the lower house of the national assembly of kenya under the constitution of 1963 so the upper house being the Senate, the lower house was the House of Representatives. Between 18 and 26th May 1963, it consisted of 129 directly elected members of parliament, with its presiding officer being the speaker, Sir Humphrey Slade, I've just told you. Uh, so that's the constitution of 1963. That's how it was. The House of Representatives, the leader of the largest party, the Kenyan African National Union at that time, was Jomo Kenyatta and he became the Prime Minister because if you have the majority then you actually become the Prime Minister and he was appointed by the Governor General at that time. I don't want to repeat who he is but you know who he is, um, Togoria Jaba Mze Jomo Kenyatta. 
was even very difficult to mention his name in public. It was actually feared and uh, he was a uh, founder. I don't want to talk much about that, but that's him. Following constitutional amendments in 1964, Kenya was declared a republic with an executive president replace, replacing the offices of the governor general and prime minister. So as I said, a republic, what is a republic? <laughs> A republic a republic from the latin word res publica that is res publica means public affairs is a form of government in which supreme power is held by the people and their elected representative do you know the power is with the people that's why the new constitution says the people are the government now if you keep quiet if you don't do anything if you don't uh, ask if you don't organize if you don't mobilize then you know there is a tendency that bad things will happen because good people like you and me didn't say anything. So the power is with us. That's what a republic means. It is not a monarchy. Where you have, like in Britain, it's still kind of not a republic, but kind of under the monarchy. I think Spain too might be the same, where you have a, a king as the head of state. In republics, the country is considered a public matter, not the private concern or property of the rulers. All right? So in Britain, they really didn't want to remove the monarchy, but for many years, Britain was ruled by kings. Much of Europe was ruled by kings, or Kaiser, if you want, in some countries. I think in Germany is the Kaiser. In, in uh, Russia, is the Tsar, uh, the Romanovs, and uh, that's how it was. The National Assembly in 1960, the House of Representatives was combined with the Senate, I think I've talked about that for a while now and there you see the National Assembly in uh, Nairobi National Assembly of Kenya it's one of the two houses of the Parliament of Kenya between 1963 20 it served as a unicameral house as I said so in 2013 the 11th Parliament uh, it became uh, the lower house when the Senate was reestablished. As I said, the new constitution 2010 actually reestablished the Senate and the Assembly was also reestablished. It has 349.6. We talked about that. It's just a repetition. And uh, the Speaker is usually the ex official. Speaker of the National Assembly of Kenya serves as an ex official member. What does that mean? He's not actually a member per se, he's not a member of parliament of any. Is like uh, one who comes in to preside over those sessions, all right? And uh, if you look at the constitution, there is a president, the deputy president, then the speaker. In case the president is incapacitated and the deputy is incapacitated, then the speaker will actually be in charge. So that's how the constitution is run. So the speaker position in the National Assembly is pretty strong in the County government, the speaker is also third in command. If the governor is incapacitated, uh, the deputy, then the speaker takes over. That's why you can see they jostle for the position of speaker. And you can see our current speaker right there. I don't know what is, your, what is his name. Do we know? Please find out. Research. <laughs> then we have the Kanu and Kadu. Uh, was as I said that's number three and uh, Kanu meant Kenya African Union and Kadu was Kenya African Democratic Union. Kanu was mainly led by Kenyatta, Kadu was by Ronald Ngala from the coast. So these were the two major political parties in Kenya during the early 1960s, Kanu being the more popular of the two and uh, they were having different political views and this is in some cases, that's why delayed the coming out of the constitution. Because every time they went to the Lancaster House, they couldn't agree, uh, pulling interests and uh, jostling for positions and all that. And I think it's human nature. It's just like <laughs> so what was their main uh, proposition or what was their main ideology? The Kanu and Kadu had opposing views on government structure. And as both parties were involved in the development of the independence constitution, made, made the process more difficult. As you can see, I've already mentioned that. 
we had three conferences for three years we are negotiating an independence constitution i would have said maybe one one and a half years but because of this and this uh, continual disagreement prevented much progress to be done one was actually proposing for a centralized government and the cadu was for regionalism as you can see in the next slide eh? as well stated that though that was their main uh, difference okay Kanu were pushing for a largely centralized government structure where power would be concentrated at the center. And Kadu, uh, that is uh, Ngala, they were calling it Majimbo, regionalism, which is what has come back again. County governments are really Majimbo. Were proponents of the regionalism where power would be, would vary, distributed across a variety of geographical regions. Now it's for you to make a judgment. Do you think centralized government was better? Uh, during the Moi days, during uh, Kibaki days, or do you think the, uh, the, the devolved governments work better? What do you think? Some think the devolved governments have just devolved corruption. Some think they are doing a good job. Basically, it takes time also for a new thing to really, you know, catch up. And I think we need to give devolved governments time, but there's quite some great progress. Because before, when there was a central government, everything you have to go to Nairobi. You want an ID, um, a birth certificate, maybe you have to go to Nairobi. Passport, Nairobi. If there's anything, I used to be a teacher, and I, all the time going to the TSC in Nairobi. One, costly. Two, waste of time. Three, it was just inconvenience. But now you can get everything done at the county government. And jobs, too. There was city, rural city migration, because... The Nairobi is where the money was. That's a capital city. Now Nairobi is still the capital city. Still the economy there is the largest. But we are developing regional cities. Kisumu is a city. Mombasa is a city. Nakuru is a city. And I know Voi one day is going to be a city. And we don't have to go to Nairobi to actually see city lights. and the So there. We got the independence constitution, which was based on the Westminster system. That means the British system. And it follows the basic structure of having a legislature, executive, and judiciary branch. That is the three arms of government. You know, the legislature, that's the parliament, executive, that's the government. And we have the judiciary, which is now under, uh, we have the Supreme Court. That's the president of the Supreme Court. I don't know who uh, she is, if you can remind me hope you know about that but these are the chapters i put them here so that you can compare with the new constitution when you talk about the new constitution compare with the old constitution we cannot go through it uh, in terms of the chapters but i thought if i could write the titles of the chapter be curious go to the lab uh, google see how it was chapter three even talks about the governor general you can imagine we got independence yet we're still talking about the governor general then there was about the regions It went up to chapter 15, miscellaneous, alternative, alternation of regional boundaries. There was a public service of Kenya, and that was your independence constitution. Finally, after three years going to the Lancaster House, and uh, its reception in Kenya was, it was a complex document. It was uh, one that was really big. It was actually difficult to understand. The people didn't even know it. And so it was uh, like an alien to it, and the constitution should really be known by everybody. That's why we'll see when we were getting the 2010 constitution, there was public participation, there was civic education. Every uh, Wanjiku, we, we tended to use Wanjiku for the common man, should know about the constitution. But this was like an elite constitution. Only those who can read, only those who went to school could really know what the constitution consisted about and this is our constitution cabinet as you can see there their names are down there but they're not very legible i can just tell you a couple of names the white one was called bruce mckenzie as a tom boyer at the end as a murumbi who became the vice president at one time there's kenyatta the israel's father odinga there's mbu koinange there is a ngala there is a gikonyo Keanu, then there is Njonjo at the back. All these are now dead. Harvester, 
Kaangaine uh, from Meru, you can see in glasses. Try to find out who these are. Be curious about your history. It will really help you to know Kenya and where we started. <laughs> Lecture 2, we look at uh, the Constitution Amendments. As I told you, the Constitution of 1963 was complex, it was big, it was cumbersome, but also it was really manipulated or it was actually mutilated, so to speak. Once it came in, there was a lot of changes brought into it, and that's what we'll look at next time. Bye for now.